everybody. I'm doing a 60 minute session for a client. There is so much awesome content in the goals. I'm going to be um, putting that in the description. I recommend you guys check it out. It's deep. Um, it's expanded um, and gives you a real feel for what this client has been going through. Also previous sessions with this client, I'm going to put in the description as well. Um, but we're going to be focusing on the heart chakra, um, energy around the face, um, the teeth, the mouth, um, back of the head, neck, um, third eye. But we're just gonna uh, we're gonna take a look at the the bigger picture of everything, okay? Including relationships with your mother, um, father. It really feels like your mother is the big one right now. Um, man, I'm really it's I'm like giving you a really big hug because you're going through so much. And I can feel all of that. And you're so observant of yourself. Um, you're an emotional person with, with so much creative energy going on here and how you process your, your feelings, your world, um, and how you work through it. It's pretty incredible. Um, wow. Okay. I'm just going to pause for a minute and catch up because I have so many visions of everything that you share just going through myself right now. So I'm just going to slow down energetically. <laughs> Relax. You'd also mentioned about retreats and when you're in a retreat experience, you feel clean, you feel healthy. Um, it's, it's kind of one of those environments where you're around a lot of people who are like-minded. It's, it's a collective experience where you're both wanting to grow, where everybody's wanting to grow and to heal together. Um, but you feel a purification of yourself and you can see, um, you can see into other people's energy fields um, and even see what their needs are. That's, a, that, that's saying something right there. What's it saying exactly? Um, obviously, the environments that you've been through with, with family relationships have been very confusing. Um, you're struggling with self-worth. Um, you've, you've said so many different um, things that you're working through. And then you put yourself into a real family environment where people are all on the same page. Um, that's going to make anybody feel a lot better. <laughs> you know what I mean? Okay. I'm going to I'm going to relax now, get tuned in. Thank you so much for everything you've shared. Thank you for being open to sharing with the public as well. And I know people reading your story are going to relate to a lot of the things that you're you're sharing. Um it's really raw and authentic human um level experience you have going on here, but I I love the expanded and creative way that you um perceive and feel and process it all. Um, it's intelligent. It's very intelligent and expanded. So I'm going to relax now. And I know your heart chakra is the big one. The biggest one. I'm just going to wait for a minute. All right. Believe it or not, we're going to quiet down your mind first. I keep seeing an image of like a, a ninja that has no weapons and it's a male and he has extremely strong body. I can see all the muscles in his arms, his chest, his abs, his legs, his calves, like he's like ultra muscular and he's running. Um, there's sort of like a tunnel that he's running through and he's running up the side of the wall and he's running around the wall and he's running down this tunnel. He's like a Wolverine type looking man. He has no weapon, so he has nothing sharp on him. And he's just wearing some really um, like Speedo type pants. <laughs> so that's what we're looking at right now. And I there's just so much circulating in the mind. <sighs> So I'm going to actually stop him from running. This must be that intense side of yourself. He just, he needs to keep pressing forward. He needs to keep pressing forward. He has to be strong. He has to be efficient. He has to be, I mean, like the ultimate fighter in a way, but he doesn't want to fight. He just wants to be the ultimate fighter. He doesn't want to fight. And I ask, well, why do you have to be so strong? Why do you have to be an ultimate fighter who doesn't fight? Is that really appropriate? All 
All right, next image. You're at the dentist and it's really crazy. It's like you're, you have a really oversized mouth and your lips are, are pulled out of the way. You have really oversized teeth. Your gums are kind of pulsating. Um, your face is really weird, like your eyes have sunken in quite a ways. Your face is um, bloated. It's uh, puffy, really, really puffy. And I see this forever, okay? They're never going to be able to fix the problem. Even your tongue, you're almost choking and gagging on your own tongue, which is inflamed, um, oversized. And I hear this is forever. This is forever. I, I see time on the clock and it just keeps going and 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 you'll never leave this chair. And these dentists are here and they're just like clanking and doing things around the teeth and moving the tongue out of the way and looking 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 and nothing is ever changing. It's almost, this is almost saying you want somebody from out there to, to find the solution because you can't be the solution for yourself. And it doesn't feel like your family members are the solution either. It's almost like it's always been you. So since it's always been you, why, why though? Why does it always have to be you? Why can't somebody out there be the solution for you for once? Why can't somebody out there be the solution for you? And your mention about fears of being alone. That's because you're going to have to keep being the solution all the time. What's your responsibility to all these people? And what's the responsibility to you? This isn't acceptable. That's why all this energy is getting choked up in the throat, in the neck, stress, like nobody's business. It's all jacked up. I mean, all this energy is all, I mean, it's like... Uh, all right, let's just keep, let's just keep going. Okay, this is interesting. Just, let's just play this out and see what happens, but we're back in the tunnel, and now I'm an ultimate fighter, and I'm up against you, and you're like Wolverine without the blades. I mean, you're, you're really, you're insanely, like, ripped. <laughs> and you're huge. You're like a six foot six, insanely ripped Wolverine looking hair and face, like everything. Um, and I'm punching you in the face really, really hard. And we're going to fight. We're going to fight. So I'm helping you to release this energy is what's coming back to me is, all right, ultimate fighter, let's fight. Let's fight. It's almost like you need to fight. It's almost like it do you some good to do some like... Uh, exercise that has to do like kickboxing or something where you're getting the fight out of you because it's stuck inside you and it's real energy it's a lot a living energy inside of you that you're just you're not um it's not going anywhere so it's almost like you need to get the fight out of you this is a very short-lived fight by the way because it's just, it isn't you. It's just not you. Like, you don't know what to do. It, it's like, this is you, but it isn't you. But how can it, how am I supposed to be something other than this? Because I kind of need to be this in order to work through my life. Like, how am I not supposed to be this? So we have this, <laughs> this going on. There's lots of mats, like uh, wrestling mats, down on the tunnel ground now. And you're bleeding out your nose. And you're not going to fight back. And you I, I hear all these words like, I mean, they're mean. They're really mean things. This all has to do with your face energy, your mental body, back your head, neck. This is, this is all it here. Obviously, I feel there's heart involved. I feel like there's a lot more involved, but... We're really focusing on clearing out this energy around the face, the back of the head, all that. 
but the mean things is like you're a stupid fat pussy. Like you, you're never gonna fight back. You're, I mean, it's mean. It's like mean, 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 mean. The meanest of the meanest of the meanest. While you've been kicked and you're down and you're bleeding and you're you're devastated and you're crying and you're supposed to be the ultimate fire, but you can't fight. And what else am I supposed to be? And what else am I supposed to do? And blah 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 blah. blah. And it's like this, okay? And I say, just let, just let him say those things. I mean, it's like, it's coming out of the thin air, these like mean messages, like, like spitting on you, peeing on you while you're down and bleeding. Like, they're really mean. It's like really negative self-talk here. And I say, just, just let it. It doesn't have to reach your, your heart. It doesn't have to sour you. Just let it say whatever it wants to say. It doesn't have to sour your heart doesn't have to be right it doesn't have to even exist because <laughs> you can block those words out now i'm starting to understand the walls and the structure of your identity is i mean you may be falling apart here and this is extremely good because how are you ever going to find self-worth you're gonna have to start with some you're gonna have to start with way new material here let me still work through this because it's <clears throat> let's just let's just go to the next experience, okay? Right now, I'm just helping the part of you that's on these floor mats. The energy it, it's like green like oh, stinky breath comes out of the air and it says really mean nasty things to you. There's um getting spit on while you're down, blood's sh coming out. Um, all this is just coming out of the air. It always comes out as this gross, stinky green fog, and it says mean things to you. And I'm telling you that none of the, the you don't have to listen to this. This doesn't have to be a part of your identity or your reality. You can just make it go away. But you have to want to. And you have to believe that that isn't true. None of that is real. You're going to have to stand on your own two feet. And it's going to be you that has to do it. And you're... It's like so much of this structure in here has been built upon a lot of coping skills, coping mechanisms, and those are coming from the ego. It's not coming from the heart. It's all been coming from the mind. That's why you're all puffed out, and that's why this has been an issue for so long, because so much of who you are has been coping mechanisms, coping skills that should be working, but they aren't. So then how do you cope with that? And now how do you cope with this? And then how do you cope with this? And then how do you cope with this? I can't be alone anymore. I can't do this anymore. That's because you can't do it anymore. Straight up. You know, you're in an environment in a retreat setting and you can do it. Because you're surrounded by people who want this too. Just like you do. And that's a real family right there. But when you're in this environment, this family environment that's so turned inside out and upside down, where do you exist in it and what are you in it? What is your role in it? And how are you going to grow anymore? And maybe this is the best thing that ever happened. All of this with your, your mom and her boyfriend. You don't need that. You do not need that. And this heartbreak might be exactly what you need to start rebuilding your life. And relying upon yourself in an environment where you're building something for you. Not for everybody else. For you. Real love here. Real authentic love. That is going to help you grow. You working on you. It circulates back into you and you actually grow. Not because you have to be an ultimate fighter that you actually don't have to be and you never had to be that and you shouldn't be trying to be that to uh, uh, create a coping mechanism completely fabricated by your ego. Because none of that actually has any real tangibility. It's not going to work. It's nothing. See, this is all emotional gut, solar plexus, heart speaking. Because your heart and emotional gut is trying to reach you. Your ego and all this stuff is trying to reach you. Um, and it's all mixed up. <laughs> so who are you? What are you? Okay. This is so freaking good because the thing I, this is a really awesome detail about you is you're a really good listener and you're very quick 
you're quick to explore a new way of approaching things to make it better to help you feel truly better so your lower chakras um feel good to you but let's just see what where are you grounded exactly and what version of yourself are you grounded into exactly the real you Maybe it's the real you at these retreats. What you are you when you're around these other family members and these other people? Are you who they need need you to be or who you think you need to be to be right for them? And to make things work? Is that real love? Like love isn't um, having to be somebody. Um, love is understood by it's a balance. It has to be a balance. I feel like your mom is missing some major details and you're falling apart. And that is where she needs to become aware that she's missing details and you're falling apart. And you should be able to have that conversation. That's balanced love. It's not always easy when it comes to family. It can be so freaking awkward and it's almost like, you know what, I'm just going to let them be them and I'm going to go find the types of loving relationships and build my own family s situation or experiences that actually make me feel healthy. Emotionally, mentally. I feel like what you've been through has, has given you extraordinary gifts and blessings. Because to become your type of mental and emotional and self um, you're so there's something very creative here in how you are your your coping skills um you're working with so many creative um identities in order to work through to bring the most harmony for everybody involved but you're the one that's that's the wreck so you can't be doing that anymore it's not gonna work at all you i don't feel like like you you say you're heartbroken but what is real love do you know what that feels like because this feels like everything that you've ever been to make happiness for everybody in your life and then to say that you're heartbroken by somebody that is is you have to do this for to bring happiness into their life so you can have a real loving relationship. All of this was all not true. I think the heartbreak truly should be you feeling exhausted that you're having to try so hard to matter that much or even that, that little. And maybe you would say, well, I do matter. I am loved. But see, again, I don't, it, it's all waffling. Like, where are you actually grounded in your understanding of what love actually is? That the blessing is to be so dynamic. To be more than a handful. <laughs> An interesting person. A very interesting person. Who worked with their heart the whole time. And got what out of it? The knowing that you put everything you ever could, your soul and your heart into this, to your family, into who you can be to help others. That's wow. That's wow. Because how many people in the world are like that? But you're like that. That's how much we should be caring about each other in this world. To the point that we're... We're, draw, we're falling apart ourselves. Maybe not, maybe... But that just shows how much love you have to share. I mean, if everybody had that much love to share, selflessly share, like the fight in you is this, this I am determination to bring love and joy and to be that for you and everybody to make it a wonderful world. But all you're getting out of it is what? Pressure blowing up your energetic face. <laughs> Day after day after day after day after day after day after day. Forever. You had to... It's a toxic environment. 
And so everything that's happening that is creating the heartbreak is a sign to me, a message that you need to get out of the toxic environment. And I think you know this because when you go to the retreat in a setting, you're totally a different person. You're grounded, you're healthy, you feel, you feel clean. That's a sign right there. You're in a very um, not healthy environment and you need, you need a sincere break from that. You need to give yourself a major break from that. It's even so much as I'm gonna take a break to the point that I'm gonna take an entire year off from everybody in my family and I'm gonna go find myself. Because you can't find yourself when you're when you're around them and you're trying to be whoever you need to be to make this love. I mean, that's not that you can just be you, okay? Okay, this is so this is weird. Um, makes me want to puke almost, but it's good. Okay, so there's it's a drawing from the top of your shoulders. There's no there's no kidding. When you talk about the energy around your face and all that, there's that, that is, um, you are spot on, absolutely 110% spot on. There's a very interesting energy thing going on here. Um, so I'm, it's like pulling up from the shoulders, up the neck, back of the head, and it's coming around. And your third eye feels kind of like a smashed blueberry. Because we need to have a better relationship between this, the mind and the heart. Because it's almost like you stand on two different grounds. The mind is the fighter and the heart is the lover. You talked about the two extremes that you feel. But isn't the heart kind of fighting for love? Passionately trying to create the most loving environment for everybody? Are you fighting for yourself? Like, See how confused it is. Okay, I feel like this energy work you could you could really get a bit derailed from it because they're just so such major. You're very pure. You're very loud, energetically loud. So, I mean, you're very honest, energetically honest. So what you're going through, you're purely expressing it, and you're going through so many things, and so that's all here, and we need to and collect it into a whole, a wholeness, and help it to feel interconnected, um, bring you back to yourself, help you to get grounded in not knowing who you are, not who you can be for others, but just simply who you are for yourself. You need to be in a loving environment, or you need to build that environment for yourself. I'm so sorry for everything you've been through because you you have been pushing so hard to just feel loved when it should be so easy, you know? It should not be this hard to love you, for anybody to love you. And for you to be heartbroken by by people that it just... I, I, right now, it's exhaustion. It's even resistance because I'm gonna have to bring this into balance. But I have to, I have to blend the relationship so that your third eye, your heart, all these upper chakras, your heart and solar plexus, these they have to have a blended relationship with each other. They have to work together. That way, you're not working with these extreme realities at the same time. But I do need to understand your sacral chakra and your root chakra because where are you actually grounded when it comes to your identity? Like, what identity? Because empathic people can sense out other people's feelings and needs so you can um, be that to help them be the brightest that they can be, which then the empath feeds off of that happiness and joy. So that way everybody's um, bright. And um, so now you're kind of... Um, you're sensing out everybody's needs um, to bring happiness and light into everybody, um, which then makes you bright. Because when everybody is bright, you're bright. Um, but then who are you? And what are your needs? So it, it can get very confusing to really understand your own identity because your identity then becomes blended with everybody else's identity as an empath.
but you matter and your identity matters and that's something that you should challenge yourself to find out um, to expect people to come out of their way for you imagine that happening This is still so like bloated. I mean, it's bloated. I can't even imagine the discomfort of this that you feel in your physical reality. Like this has got to be ridiculously uncomfortable. I mean, a bloated face, bloated gums, tongue, um, crushed blueberry third eye like whoa see how this has gone too far you doing for everyone like this has gone too far to this is how what it's doing to you I'm still working on this. I have to get you to register. It's almost like your face won't... It's like you have an energetic lobotomy. Like you just are... You're not even blinking at me. You're just like a vegetable in a, in a bed. Not even blinking at me. You just... It's like you're feeling the, the pain so much right now in your head and face and your throat and the back of your neck. And I mean, it's really severe. Um, it's like you can't even speak. You can't even blink. You can't even move. You loved so hard that you did this to yourself. And you're the one that feels like this this is like what is the heartbreak actually stand for? Like what it's tied to in a major illusion about what love is and what the heartbreak actually represents. It should be disappointment, which it is. But it's it's lost in... I, I, I don't know the words yet for it because there's so many interesting identities going on here with a super empathic person who's ultra creative um, and emotional and everything is all about like love and generosity and giving 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 and being the ultimate fighter of love for for everybody that is breaking your heart and bringing this out of you bloated energy face smash third eye like you're beat up you're so beat up that's why I have to be so strong, but who's beating up who here? You're overdoing it. You're overextending yourself. This has to stop. You're going to have to reverse roles. The love's got to come back to you. It has to. This is a really bad downward spiral here. All right, it's getting a uh, puke, uh, feeling like I'm um, gonna puke is happening. And I, I'm screaming and I'm, I'm screaming like things like I hate, I, I like because I'm in so much pain and I'm so in much anguish, it's like, I hate, <laughs> it's like, it, there's no words to define it. It's like, I hate that <laughs> It's like this and then barf, okay? Because this is so much anguish. Like, and it's in so much, like, pulsating, bloated, wrong, messed up, jacked up pain. And it really came from you overextending yourself and your ego and creative mind coming up with all these ideas to make it great. And it never was going to work. It was just going to overextend yourself to the point that you can't even move. You're like a non-functioning vegetable that can't even blink. That's barfing now. From how sick, vibrationally sick you've made yourself. You made it, you made yourself this way. 
but they they have to be held responsible too but you can just start living your life and discovering what real love feels like and that may take some serious time because you're gonna have to learn about it I don't really know what you've ever been grounded into other than you're such a lover you're a super lover like you're like you're a happy puppy to give love so much love to give that is definitely your identity but how does that identity work with the human body and the human world you're gonna blow your head up Ugh. Right, and we're still, this is still like, we're really feeling it, okay? You ever go sledding and you're so cold, but you just keep going sledding anyway, and then you finally come inside and it's just like this terrible nightmare of numbing, pulsating pain in your feet and your hands, and you're like, why did I push myself so hard? Because I was having fun! <laughs> and now you have to cope with this, and you have to like slowly thaw out. <laughs> And the cold water is like steaming hot. You know, it's kind of like this right now. We're like, this, that's what your energy field feels like. Um, like we're in the aftermath of pushing yourself way too hard. And now we're having to like slowly thaw out from it. And like, you're just this bloated vegetable that can't even blink. That's, that's where we're at right now. on bringing balance to your energy field. good you're mad at this is this is healthy this is just you saying i'm mad i'm mad at my mom i'm mad at my dad i'm mad at my mom's boyfriend i'm mad at you know i'm mad at, at my life i'm mad that i had to try so hard to be loved and appreciated and it didn't work i'm mad at like it's just saying that you're mad at these things and and you are you you are mad and and that's an honest human emotion and i understand why you feel that way it's honest. It's not like um, you don't have a right to be mad. <sighs> you do. So you're just saying, I'm mad, I'm mad, I'm mad, I'm mad, I'm mad, I'm mad, I'm mad. Like, I'm mad, I'm mad at this, I'm mad at that, I'm mad, I'm mad, I'm mad. And it's like, good. That, that, so you're just being honest about what, what you're mad about. I mean, you're mad. It's not, I'm upset, I'm frustrated. It's not any of those. It's like, I'm mad. I'm very mad. It's not even I'm angry. It's like I'm mad. And so is it mad as in I'm insane? I've lost my mind over this. I've freaking jacked up my energy field over this. I've gone mad over this. I'm pissed. I'm mad pissed. You know? And it's like, it's interesting because the word mad is the perfect word to describe what you're venting out right now. By the way, you're not barfing anymore. <sighs> this is still swelled up and, and pulsating, but it's actually uh, better. <laughs> it's an improvement. There's some weird energy here with your spine. You were mentioning your spine as well and some sciatica issues. That That's pretty darn painful. Okay. This is me. I'm still working through the pulsating stuff. This is more than just the head and the neck. It's like there's energy around the chest here too with the heart and the stomach. Um... But there's something going on with the spine, and I'm, I'm really looking at that right now, because there's totally something going on with your spine. You like to bounce back pretty quick. You're already showing me that, oh, I'm fine now. I'm totally fine now. Like, you've already sucked in all this bloated energy. It's just like nothing ever happened. It's like, wow, that's pretty amazing. But I'm not going to let you go anywhere. Even though you're fine and everything's dandy, you're still prone to going back to the exact same behavior, which means you're going to wind up here with the exact same issue. So you bounce back really quick, but you're going to bounce back into doing the exact same thing that's going to wind you up feeling terrible again and again and again and again and again and again and again. I don't know what this is going to amount to, but you're going to, it's going to create really bad health issues later on in life. Just so you know, because 
this is really unusual, like bloated. You can't ignore this. That's why you can't ignore this. That's why you're saying, I feel it in my tongue and my gums and my, it really is like energetically bloated everywhere. That's why you feel it because it's trying to get your attention to, to try to understand this. So you can bring, bring this into balance, you know? Don't, when you feel better, be very careful about just bouncing back into the same thing again. And everything's hunky-dory. It's not going to be hunky-dory. You're going to become the same again and again and again and again. Because you have to break the cycle. To break this cycle, you have to do a flat-out different event. Like literally... I'm taking a vacation from all of these family members and I'm going to take one year and I'm going to go away somewhere. I'm going to go live in a new city and have a new life. And I'm not going to talk to anybody for a whole year. Like I'm telling you, you need to take an extreme change. That's the only way to break the cycle because you're going to find yourself doing this again. And you can't keep doing this. I don't even feel like it's your calling. I feel like you've, you played your role. And you, they have, they have to go to the next phase of their learning and you need to go into the next phase of your learning. And that is you letting go of them, which is then embracing yourself. And you are going to feel weird because like, you don't need a lot. You don't need to receive. You would rather the world be a happy place and that's all you would ever need. But you actually need to learn how to receive. You need to learn how to receive big time. You're super, I feel it happening again already. Um, you're bouncing up like, oh, I'm great. Thank you. I'm going to go right back to where I was and I can keep going now doing the same thing. You might even convince yourself you're not doing the same thing, but you're going to find yourself doing the same thing again. You literally have to make a change and you have to start learning how to receive. And it's, you know that that's not a selfish thing. It's not selfish to learn how to receive. Um, but yet you don't need or want anything extra from anybody. But that there's something incorrect about that because it has to be a harmonious balance. So if you're just giving all the time and not receiving, you're not working with harmonious balance. You have to learn how to work with a harmonious balance. So as you give, you have to receive as well. And sometimes when people give to you, you'll want to give three times as much just to be th so to thank them. You, you you have to work with balance. So you're gonna have to hold yourself back. I mean, you need the like you're the horse that can run really fast. But we have to like no pony, slow down, slow down, no, you, you stop. <laughs> Yeah, this is this is uh, this is helping you. I'm still speaking to the face, energy, throat, like literally all of this, but then it's almost like they're in these sectors. Throat and up is in its own sector. Heart and stomach in its own sector. Um sacral and root in their own sector, you know? So they're kind of sectored out, which they need to not be. <laughs> they need to be a blended family. I've all this this almost feels normal, okay? This almost feels normal. But my face is ridiculously hot, like super hot. You have a lot of energy, that's for sure. You're super energized bunny. You have a lot of energy. Okay, see, um, this is this is the part where you're gonna start feeling more honestly grounded, <sighs> because you're becoming grounded in um, balanced belief systems. I don't even want to call this belief systems because I'd rather call it just balanced truth. Giving and receiving has to be balanced. That is a balanced truth. 
you have to slow down. That is that is going to balance your that's going to balance the whole thing. You need to hold back and bring more of the energy back in yourself. That's going to help this whole situation. See, I'm continuing to show you this stuff um, over and over. This, 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 this. Circulate it back. Circulate it back. Circulate. Slow down. Whoa, horsey. Slow down. Circulate it back. I just keep showing like this this energy imprint. Here it is again. Here it is again. Here it is again. Here it is. 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 Um, because you need to be reminded of it over and over and over and over and over. <laughs> I've got to get it in your thick head. You matter. Energy comes back. I think the love that you have for everybody, so ridiculously beautiful, that's still real. That is still real. Let your mom be your mom. Let her boyfriend be whoever he is. Your dad be your dad. Like, Let them be who they are. Let's find out who you are by working with these basics with balance. It's the most loving thing that you could do for your mom, your boyfriend, and, and your dad, and, and everybody. Is for you to give back to yourself now. All the love that you will bend over backwards and create all these different identities to help everybody. You got to do that for you now. You got to bend over backwards to do that for you now. All the love that you have for this whole world now, you you need that love. That is your love for yourself now. That's going to help quiet down these extremes, okay? And the ultimate fighter isn't, it isn't necessary anymore, okay? You don't have to be so strong. Because you have to be that strong when you're giving so much and trying like in this insane way to help people. It, but you don't have to be that. You can be just like a regular person now. Love does, doesn't have to take so much ridiculous strength. When it, when it works with balance. It can be as simple as a little tiny pond. And that is generous. You are a simple little tiny pond and that tiny pond is generous in, in being just simply itself. You want to be the whole ocean. You want to be more and more and more. This helping, again, this is almost back. It's, it's, it's almost normal again, but I'm concerned that you're going to make it this way again. you got to really... You gotta really just be very careful here. And it's circulating, you're not, you don't, you're not the whole ocean anymore. You're just a little tiny pond, okay? How about you're just one tiny little drop of water? And I'm just, there's a water droplet, dropper, and I'm just dropping one tiny little drop on a countertop, and I'm looking at you. And this little droplet of water is so generous. And that's all it ever has to be, is just this one little drop of water. That's the most generous drop of water I've ever seen in my life. And that drop of water does not have to be the whole ocean. And I understand why to be the ultimate fighter, to be like ridiculously strong and beyond conceivably normal. To try to be an ocean. For, the, for everybody, really. This is so disorienting and exhausting on the head. I feel even kind of shaky in my arms about it. I feel dizzy and disoriented. I feel tired. I feel like... Crying. This is good because we're still working on blending the sector, okay? Throat and above with heart and stomach. I feel like I'm better blending because as this the, the puke comes out, as the I'm mad comes out, we're starting to blend the emotions with the throat and the, the like we're starting to blend these together. The more I talk about how we work with balance, your third eye's watching, you know, so we're understanding to, to circulate the love back to you 
Um, so the third eye is processing this, is understanding this, crown is understanding this, like, so we're circulating a relationship between the emotions, the heart, the throat, the third eye, the higher mind, like we're circulating the, that um, connection with each other, circulating it back. And so there's no separation, it feels like the, they're part of the same family. You're super exhausted. I mean, you're so exhausted. I'm trying to decide what, what to do with you. Because I don't know if I could... I don't know if... Uh, I'm going to lay you in a bed. And I'm going to turn the light out. And I'm going to tuck you in. And then I'm going to watch you sleep. There's nothing creepy about this. But you aren't going to be alone. That's why I'm going to watch you sleep. So you're not alone. And when the light's out, there's my spirits watching over you. And you need to feel tucked in and comforted. Where you don't have to be like holding up the whole world. This is where your inner child is coming in here. Where somebody, you're there, the, it's like they're taking care of you. And you feel taken care of, you feel taken care of in a, like a parent-child way. Where you're the child now being watched over by a parent that is literally that considerate and caring of you. You're having um, a difficult dream and you're rolling around in your bed. So I touch your third eye. And I'm mending the blueberry. And I'm touching your sacral chakra. And I'm balancing the connection. They create kind of like a, um, a wishbone in a turkey. You see like a wishbone and then another bone comes down and, it, and it's like a finger that touches your heart. Third eye, your heart, and your sacral chakra are being touched at the same time. To help that this, this dream to relax. And you're fighting with yourself and your dreams. And you're angry at yourself and you're disappointed in yourself. And you're sick of yourself. And you hate yourself. But that's what happens when you work so hard to be loved and appreciated and you don't get it. So you're the problem. Now, if you were rewarded for your hard work, you wouldn't have to punish yourself. How are you ever going to get rewarded from like, continuing to help people that you've always been trying to bend over backwards to be just a little bit of enough, never really being it? And you could say in your ego, like, oh, you know, I probably was over exaggerating, you know, I probably. <sighs> I, I was I am loved but you know it's just like it, you are ripping yourself apart because you worked so hard to get an ounce of affection and you're still doing all of this same stuff and it's okay to say that you weren't given enough and don't sugarcoat it and it's okay to say that it's, it's just it's like being a little bit more matter-of-fact about it. You still want to fight with yourself because... Because you hate yourself. And why do you hate yourself?
because you couldn't be good enough for mom or dad and you're heartbroken by a mom that you can't be good enough for. And maybe you felt somewhat good enough for her. But is it balanced love? Do you know what that's like? You still have an energetic flair to keep overdoing it. Because you do have so much love to give, but you haven't learned how to love yourself. So how will you ever really know how to love anybody if you can't love yourself? You have to learn how to receive love. And you have to expect to receive love in your life. It feels like that's the next hard step that you're going to be exploring. And who could, who would have thought that learning, you know, the next hard step is you will have to learn how to receive love in your life. Boy, that's, that's really hard. Boy, it is. It would be hard for you. Is it hard for your dad to receive love from you? See how much you love your dad? Is it hard for you to receive love? Because you don't need it? Because you can be enough love for everybody? You're one drop of water. You're just one drop of water. You don't have to be the whole ocean. Again, you're still, you're coming down into your body. This is you getting more grounded. I feel a much healthier third eye and crown, but the, this is not as puffy. It's still very hot, but it's like, it's simmering down still. It's almost like normal, okay? It's almost normal, but as you can see, you could trip the trigger. So you need it's like, be very careful. It's like, uh, you just, I, I don't know. I, I see somebody with a broken leg come into a hospital. They just set the bone, but they never put a cast on. And then you're just out running and your bone is not even mended yet. It's like, the, this don't, oh, this is new. Like you need to rehabilitate. I mean, and this could be like a year of time of d just a totally new environment for you. And that is rehabilitation. You need like a year of totally new environment for yourself. And that is rehabilitation because you need to be introduced to different energies, different personalities, different styles, different interactions, different ways to love and receive love. You need to be in a new environment. I feel like that's going to happen for you. It's just, it's going to happen out of its own accord somehow. It's just going to circulate in a new, in a new and unique direction for you. So I keep seeing again, um, a horse, but this time it's not you. That's the horse is and it's a horse that is actually here for you. And the horse wants to carry you. And you have to see that this horse wants to help you, but you have to be willing to be helped by it. Otherwise you'll continue to walk on your own two feet. And so those horses that come into your life to carry you, you don't shoo them away. They're in a way your own spirit guides, incarnate as people and soulmates, right? There's going to be horses in your life that are going to be new people that you meet. And they're going to be people who want to carry you, want to help you. So let yourself be helped, okay? I mean, it feels like you need a good 10 years. <laughs> I mean, you really do. So even when you're at these retreats and you feel so much better all of a sudden, that's because you bounce back quick, but you haven't, you haven't learned the, you haven't developed the tools to maintain it. You are just putting yourself in an environment only to take yourself out of it and then fall, like go back to the same energetic rhythm again to, to truly change. You have to be consistently in a different environment for a while. To adapt to a new energetic flow, you know? All right, I feel, I mean, I'm so impressed. You're very quick. Um, again, you bounce back fast. So this extreme energy field of yours is already um, not just, I mean, it's repairing. It's already repairing very quickly, but it's still vulnerable to be going way back, right back to where you were. And you still have the, 
the inclination to do it without even realizing it, you're doing it again. So be careful, okay, about that side of yourself. And the, the ultimate fighter is totally relaxed down. This bloated energy is relaxed down. It's still very fresh and new to be in this way. So it's the most unfamiliar that it could ever be to you, that it would be relaxed down. This could be inflamed very quickly. So just be gentle, gentle as you can be. I'm starting to feel a relationship with your heart and emotional gut, third eye, crown, throat. This feels like it's circulating together better now. I want to go just, I really want to look at your root chakra, your sacral. Let's just start circulating this and this. Like, let's circulate them all together, okay? Mm, yeah, your spine again. You're, I, I go into your root and your root is like showing me a diagram of you from the front and then it's turning you around and I see your spine and it's like this, 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 this is like all the back sides of your chakras and your root's like this, this, this is all the way down your spine and the back of your head. It's like, it needs work. Okay, let's look at the back side of your root chakra then. Okay, oh man. Oh, it's like a whole new environment back here. It is a weird place back here. It's cool because it's so different. It's like a whole new side of you. Like a whole new world back here. I don't even know what to say. All right, let's just start by all your chakras. It's like they're full with some kind of black grit and um, it's shiny and there's some gold and copper flecks in it. It could be a really cool, like, uh, organite, you know, black tourmaline with some copper and, like, different flecks in it, you know. And it's kind of all of them. It looks like a, um, a tin can full of this. Another tin can, another tin can. It's like all your chakras going down. It's like, whoa, what's this weird substance in all your chakras back here? It's so weird. Do you work with black tourmaline? That'd be, do you work with organite? Like... Is that why you feel you're better ground with grounding? You must maybe work with grounding stones, but there's something that we could be actually grounded, right? You can be grounded, but you, you may not be grounded in your identity. You may not be grounded in um, the truth. You may not be grounded in... So there's different ways to be grounded, you know? Oh man, this is so jacked up. I don't even know what to say, like... There's really big um, bones pushing out of your, particularly your lower chakras, but it seems to be happening in all the, your, the back side of all your chakras. They're all like, look the same. And they all have the same thing going on. They look like old rusty tin cans full of black, chopped up little pieces of black and copper and gold flecks. <laughs> And now big, like, dinosaur-sized bones are being pushed through these tin cans. And it's all along your spine. All the way down to your hips. And your tailbone. Like, it's down there. Mm. You're screaming and crying at the same time. Your spicy, cinnamony face is, like, burning up here. You're wriggling. And you're like a wriggling body that's like being radiated from the inside out and you're shriveling up and you're screaming and flapping around like fish out of water. Like f furiously fast, like, <laughs> like you're really going for it here. And you're red in color. I mean, I'm going to have to just watch you. Like you're being electrocuted down to a dry dust. Like, that's what it looks like. And your body's flapping and getting smaller and smaller and smaller. just looking like a little tiny raisin. Just gonna pop and turn into a little bit of dust. When I look at you from the backside in, it's like... Oh my gosh. This face, okay? This feels a lot better. Um, I mean, telling you there's so many dynamic sides to an energy field, but... This is another side of you. <laughs> So let's keep looking at this here. You're very, I, I just want you to know you, there's a lot with, like you still feel very healthy to me, okay? Physically healthy. 
but with all this energy stuff going on you can imagine how this will impact your organs um over time it's basically stress you know can't you're like a balloon that ran out of air and you just look like a, a, a balloon with no air on the ground and you're again the color red red balloon no air this is getting way worse here now the bones they, they were kind of like leg bones that were popping out like the, particularly the lower chakras but there were a few popping out the neck and the um, back of the head like the third eye um it's now like you're getting um sharp teeth on the back of your spine all your spine has the, these sharp teeth coming out like spikes on your back it looks like an old dinosaur like back side of a dinosaur or something this is a lot of your rage and your anger and the mistreatment i would define it, it's it's it could be characterized as as abuse on a level okay but you wouldn't i don't i mean you kind of referred to it as kind of abuse but not really but it is because um Look at how hard you work to feel loved. And so so why couldn't you just feel loved? The, when the love is lacking, is that abuse? It's because it just was empty and devoid of love. Like there's no, no love here. Um, was it really that abusive? Is it abusive? It just it just was there just wasn't the exchange of love wasn't on the, the level that you needed. Was that abusive then? Um, I'm telling you all the anger that is saturated in your backside and all the chakras on your backside says that it was abusive. Again, all bones, really sharp bones now, um, they're like knives. They're coming out of all of the, your whole back, that some of the chakras, like it's all the chakras, but it's like in between chakras, like coming out your back. It's just another image of more of this sharp stuff coming out the back side of you. It's like super sharp, like knife, like objects and sharp bones and things. Your hips are just totally out of whack here. You're very exhausted mentally. Mm. You don't feel, um, this is really tight, your throat. You don't feel nausea or anything like that. And ask your root how it's doing now. I'm still seeing sharp objects coming out. It's just like it replays the image and then another layer of the same image and then another layer of the same image. So we're just kind of moving through until the, this image doesn't need to replay itself because it said everything it needed to say. So let's look at your root chakra. It's deflated. It's exhausted. It's completely and utterly exhausted. It has no spirit left in it. it. Has no. It's just totally exhausted. Is what's like. <sighs> Starting to a new level of you is 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 visible now. You look like a, a soldier that's been shot by a machine gun a hundred thousand times, and you're still alive somehow. And you're having to drag yourself across a field of war and dead bodies and blood. But you can do it, you can do it, you can do it, you can do it. You can keep being the whole ocean for the world. I'm just going to stick around for just another minute or two because there's another thing happening. This is another layer. This is a this is really you as a cord out shell. Like a tree that's totally cored out and like become hollow. 
what are you juicing yourself up with? Where are you pulling the energy from? Because you're actually deflated, def just you're totally exhausted. This is why I'm concerned that you're going to try to bounce back and you're not, you don't even have the energy to do it. You think you have it. You think you do. You don't. You're de totally deflated. Now, there's a couple of beings here that, um, not, not very nice. And, uh, one has a dropper of red and it's putting red into this clean drop of water that you are and it just likes to just mess you up it just likes to just mess you up in your mind it's like yeah, it's just getting a kick as it just add a little bit of red into your clean water just a little bit of red just enough to be noticed just to mess you up a little bit and it was so easy to do it just to like taint you a little bit. It just likes to taint you. It's this man. He thinks it's freaking hilarious. He sees that he's tainting you and he likes it. Is this your mother's boyfriend? There's other figures that are in the shadow that are kind of trying to taint you. But you just keep giving love to these freaking like you can love them, but you don't need to be in the same environment as them. It's really bad and unhealthy. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to I'm going to change this, okay? So that that is not a connection cuz that's that is part of the pain in your heart. That is freaking rude. That is rude and jacked up. It might not be that big of a deal, but over time, that builds up into a really jacked up. That's why your self-worth is so messed up, too. Like, <sighs> This is good. All, we're, all I'm doing is desensitizing you to all that was about. And as you desensitize to it, the red goes away and it doesn't matter because all he's doing is he's putting the red inside of his own drop of water. All he's doing is tainting himself. You have nothing to do with his jacked up decisions. It has everything to do with him, not you. So what you need to do is whenever something is kind of rubbing you the wrong way, create a mirror and it has to be sent directly back to that person and that might be your mom or your dad or anybody because they have to receive the they have to receive the energy back because you can't absorb it anymore it's too hard on you so i'm deflecting that energy back to him because that never actually happened to you that just happened to him that's better you still don't feel safe and so what can I do because I see why you feel uncomfortable being alone because you can't defend yourself from all this energetic pain anymore like you're just burnt out you're completely burnt out you see why you need a new environment like your life and health and sanity depends on it but you have to do that so I'm just creating an energetic wall of pure love and light just surrounding you in it so that you can feel safe and secure and that anything that is negative that is being directed at you, even if it's manipulated so you wouldn't even notice it, the frequency of manipulation is still there. So it's going to bounce off of this energy, this protective energy around you. It's just going to go right back to them, okay? It has nothing to do with you. That helps you feel that's good for your inner child. That helps you feel safer and secure. Um, that's that's healthy. Like I feel a new relationship with your, your root, your sacral, your heart. Like all these front chakras. I even feel a lot has been released on the back side as well. Your hips feel better balanced. Obviously this is just one session. So um, there's a lot here. But this is a really, really good start. You should notice yourself feeling better, but you might feel pretty darn exhausted. This is going to give you a lot to think about, okay? You're super loving soul, and that's what makes you great. Just try to be more the drop of water 
that is just so generous than trying to be the whole ocean to be generous enough. Okay, so just a drop of water that is so generous. And that's going to help repair and bring a lot of the energy back into yourself. And this shield is going to send a lot of this other negative energy back into whoever is sending it to you. See, it's done. It's over. It'll help you feel more secure in your own space with you. And nurture you now. Nurture you now. Okay. <laughs> Thank you so much. I'm really glad that I could do this session for you and um, just giving you a really big hug. We need support. Mm. Okay. Um, for those of you watching, if any of you are interested in exploring a psychic session with me, please visit me at my website at abbynormalswisdomquest.com. I also have two other YouTube channels, so you can check me out at Abby Normal and at Zodiac Energy Readings. I'm also on Patreon at patreon.com slash Abby Normal's Wisdom Quest. All right, thank you all for watching, and I hope you all have a wonderful rest of your day.